Okay, well, after riding this SB165, I can tell you it has a desired rate of speed much higher than this trail system or me as a rider is willing to send this thing. I mean, in terms of confidence, like I could not be more confident on any other bike. It's just so incredibly stable and plush and damp and quiet and all the other words you can think of. This has been a lot of fun riding this bike. I have been riding the all new Yeti SB165. It's a mullet 27.5 rear wheel with a 29er front wheel and the bike is absolutely bananas. I don't get to ride bikes like this very often. This is a long travel bike. I mean, this is much different than the normal trail bikes that I typically ride on this channel. It has a 170 millimeter fork and 165 millimeters of rear travel with a coil and that, you know, incredible Yeti, you know, switch infinity suspension system back there. Um, it has a very slack 63 and a half degree head tube angle, which if you're looking for a bike like this, that, that's probably something that you really like. Come on this ride with me today. We'll do a little bit of climbing, but mostly downhill. Talk about the kind of nuances of this bike and kind of what this bike does. And I was just blown away with how capable this bike is. Today's video is sponsored by Salt Cycles and they're a local Yeti dealer. Okay, so I am getting close to the top of my over 2,000 foot climb. Um, geez, after about an hour of climbing on this Yeti SB165, you know, this is a big bike. And if you follow my channel, I, I kind of spend more time on those shorter travel bikes. However, my personal long travel bike, which is more of a trail bike, is a Yeti SB140 lunch ride. So has a 160 millimeter fork and it's a 29er front and rear. So I've been thinking about that bike that I, that's my personal bike as I've been climbing on this one. And in as much as this thing doesn't scoot up the trail like a Yeti SB140, um, I am surprised like it climbs, it gets you where you need to go. It's just, I, I, I would not want to go do a big day on this bike, I don't think. Um, it's kind of heavy. That front, that front tire kind of wanders a little bit. It's a 63 and a half degree head tube angle, right? And almost 77 degree seat tube angle. And so in any case, I think I can say in the same breath, it's not a bike I'd want to go tackle a big, a big day on, a lot of miles, you know, but to get you up a 2000 foot climb like today, to descend down a really fun high speed trail that requires, or at least makes a bike like the SB160 a lot, makes the trail a lot more fun on a bike like this. Yeah, it, it, it gets you where you need to go. Um, it's difficult because I, 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 I can't really compare this bike to like the Santa Cruz Nomad or the Ibis HD6 because I haven't, I've not yet ridden those bikes, right? I spend most of my time on kind of, kind of mid to short travel bikes. So I don't have a, like a depth of other bikes I've ridden like this, but in any case, I am surprised at how well, it pedals and it's just you feel that front end just a little bit, but I think you would on any bike with a 64 or slacker degree head tube angle, right? I think this is the type of terrain uh, people buy these bikes for. Just incredibly steep, hike a bike, lots of shelfy drop rock sections and high speed. So we'll give it a go. Oh, I'm sick of hiking this bike though, I can tell you that much. Get over those chunky sections. Wow. That's amazing. So last year I rode a couple long travel bikes, but not mullets. So not spent a lot of time on mullets, but I'm five foot eight, 
on a size medium and I've had my rear, I've had my butt snag that rear tire on a 29er enough times to always wonder if a mullet would be a good idea for me. I cannot believe how smooth this bike is. That's crazy. Wow, I'm a little speechless. I can't believe that rear tire is just like glued to the ground. Wow. Oh my word. You guys, this bike is bananas. If you want just like a wildly different experience from the other bikes that I typically ride on this channel, <laughs> that's it right there. Wow. That is worth pedaling up the hill because you just, the stability and traction, it's just, it's like, it's like a totally, just completely different experience from riding a normal kind of trail bike. Wow. I used to own the Pivot Firebird and it doesn't have the same feeling that this bike has. Definitely. Woo! Wow. Okay. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, this bike just has a whole nother gear, no doubt about it, uh, for speed and just uh, stupidity. You can go be any kind of rider you want to be on a bike like this. My goodness. Wow. I, and I apologize. This. This review is not going to be done justice on this SB165 today, partially because of me and my lack of willingness to just let this thing eat. I, I would imagine my buddy Tyler, it'd be fun to get his take on this because holy Moses, this thing, this is just, this wants to gobble up trail. And that trail that we just did is very high speed and it's got several rocky kind of shelfy sections of trail you know one and a half foot drops kind of throughout not really drops but like shelves you know and to let off the brakes and just let this thing go the bike is fine it's just my my lack of desire to, to go any faster oh my word yeah this is this is a bike that can go do anything my goodness so now we're on a blue flow trail, which I can't imagine is where someone buying this bike is gonna be taking this, this thing, but it's always nice to have an idea of what these long travel kind of more enduro-y, downhill -y, whatever you wanna call it, bikes do on more moderate trails. Because if this is a, a consideration for your only bike to go and you mostly go ride high alpine big gnarly stuff or lift service bike park type stuff well okay that's fine but you're gonna find yourself on blue trails no matter what and float trails man it's easy to manual this thing that's for sure still has a decent amount of spring to its step which i think would be valuable man that rear end comes around quick Interesting. What a fun bike. What a different experience than most trail bikes that I ride. And it's just so damp and quiet. I mean, it's like, wow, so fun. All right, this is a pretty tight, zippy section of trail. I mean, it feels pretty different than a trail bike. That's for sure. I mean, I know I'm on a blue flow trail right now on this massive 
165 millimeter rear coil bike and you can feel you can feel the weight of the bike and it doesn't carry its speed on this blue trail quite as well as an actual trail bike right but it's still rewarding and fun to pump into these corners and just really go on this thing without a doubt it needs a higher speed limit and uh even on a flow trail like if i went if i took this up to the bike park and rode one of their big flow trails it would be a lot of fun because the speed would be much higher just i can't believe how composed the rear end of this bike is it's so quiet and damp and controlled it's amazing more so than probably you know for sure like i, I can't remember a time i felt like this on a bike even on this little jump line here you can just feel it just needs more it needs more than this so my apologies i don't have i don't have a trail system that allows for the speeds the 165 wants to go but i can tell you if i did it would be a lot of fun to test my own limits and see what i was willing to do on a bike like this it'll be fun this summer to take this bike to demo it from salt cycles and take it up to deer valley and ride the lifts because this would just be it's such a balanced bike i feel really at ease on it really comfortable and uh i think a day at the bike park would just be incredible on a bike like this Whew. fun after riding this bike today i would say the takeaway is this bike is incredibly balanced it kind of makes it so you don't have to think about the trail when you're riding it just any uncertainty or uneasiness that you would normally feel in a certain situation on some terrain that you maybe normally ride it just kind of evaporates it it makes it go away that rear suspension is so damp and controlled and just sticks to the ground I can't remember the last time I rode a bike that did what this does. It's very different than the trail bikes that I typically ride on this channel. Um, I personally own a Yeti SB140 Lunch Ride, which has a 160 millimeter fork, only 10 millimeters less traveled than this fork, which is about a half of an inch. It doesn't seem like it would be that big of a difference, but I can tell you this bike feels wildly different than my Yeti uh, SB140. Um, it's just a really neat bike. I actually, I'm, I'm five foot eight on a size medium and it has a 460 millimeter reach and I've just felt so comfortable on it. I, I'd probably put a shorter stem on it. In fact, two of the things that kind of um, stood out to me on my ride uh, today was I wish that it had a 34 tooth chain ring. This bike wants to go speeds that are so high, I kind of spun out a couple times. So it'd be nice to have a little bit larger chain ring if I were buying this bike. And then the stem is this kind of clunky looking 50 millimeter stem which you know i'd want a shorter stem but that's not the real problem it's just this is like a nine thousand dollar bike and this stem just kind of looks like trash just my personal opinion anyway the rest of the bike is dialed this is the xo transmission drivetrain by sram sram code brakes were incredible uh carbon bar i mean you can click the link down below to the description of the bike you can go look at all the numbers about a 77 degree seat tube angle 63 and a half degree head tube angle um, the wheelbase isn't too crazy on this size medium but you feel its traction and its stability what a fun time i had today call chris at salt cycles if you're looking for a bike like this this is a bike park lift serve just destroyer i mean i just think you would absolutely love something like this it's incredible anyway thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next one okay so this trail gets us back up to a little bit higher speeds ah fun yeah it's just easy to manage a lot for sure I like having that smaller rear wheel out back. For me, as a slightly shorter rider, I appreciate it kind of being out of the way, but it also feels different than a 29er back there. 
it feels a little quicker, a little easier to uh, leverage on. You know, use my, because I'm 5'8", I'm a little smaller, it requires less, less effort for me to kind of put some leverage on that rear wheel is what I'm noticing. I mean, it just makes these jumps throughout this section just seem like so inconsequential. Whereas on a shorter travel trail bike, they can feel a little uneasy sometimes jumping. This bike feels so stable, so composed. It just kind of takes, takes any of the uneasiness out of the trail, which is, if that's what you want to do, that's a really nice thing for a bike to provide you. It just dumbs down the trail. So if you want to go ride sketchier, higher speed, gnarlier stuff, well, this is a bike you would be interested in then. It'll allow you to focus more on what you're doing as a rider and be less nervous or uneasy about the terrain you're riding. Wow, what a fun bike. I mean, can you believe a bike that does that on the downhill? you can pedal up to the top of the trail. I can imagine this would just blow downhill bikes from even eight years ago or nine years ago, probably blow those downhill bikes out of the water that don't even have dropper posts. I mean, this thing just gives you such a unique and different experience from other trail bikes. That's, that was, mind is blown, that was fun.